Welcome back to my channel, Read Good, Draw Bad, where I talk about books that I think are interesting and impactful, and then I also draw a few pictures at the same time. Happy Remembrance Day for those of you that are celebrating in Canada and remembering the loved ones, veterans, and those who have fought and lost their lives because of war. Unfortunately, uh, even today, there are still many wars that are going on. I think it's really important that we think to never again let the atrocities happen that happened in World War I and World War II, which is what Remembrance Day is all about. As I challenged myself to read a little bit more about a particular war, World War II, I was reading about the Holocaust and I was looking for an author or a way to sort of introduce myself to subjects of the Holocaust that I thought I could share with all of you. I found this author, her name is Kathy Kaser, and she is an author who writes primarily about the Holocaust. Even more so, she's someone who's dedicated her life to discussing with children and with young people especially what happened during the Holocaust and writing at a level so that they can understand what happened to both families and to young people that went through some of the horrible events that happened in Germany and beyond during World War II. And she writes in a very relatable way that I find is very not scary at all. And she has many books that I will sort of show on the screen here that I think you could dive into if you were interested in teaching children about World War II or about the Holocaust, about injustice in general. I think this is a great place to start and I just wanted to do a quick shout out to the author before I got into the particular book we're going to be talking about today. So if you would like to come on a journey with me to talking about justice and war trials and war crimes, then I invite you to read the book with me called To Look a Nazi in the Eye by Kathy Kaser and Jordana Lebowitz. So this book is a true retelling of Jordana's story, which is written by Kathy Kaser, who took complex information from the trial of a prominent Nazi figure, the bookkeeper of Auschwitz, and put it into a big story so that people like you and me can understand both the motivations of Jordana and also some of the war trial uh, documents and media that were there um, without making it too complicated. Jordana is an 18 year old teen at the time from Canada who visits the historic concentration camps and is very emotionally and deeply affected by what she sees there. Eventually she learns that there will be a prominent Nazi put on trial for war crimes and she has a very strong desire to go that she can't quite put into words, but she feels very strong that as a young person, she should be there to witness this piece of history happen. And this particular war trial was famously documented and is the trial of the bookkeeper of Auschwitz, Oskar Groening. The Holocaust is an incredibly deep and complex topic, so I'm not going to go deeply into it today, but I do think there's lots of great authors and books someday that I would like to discuss on this channel. For today, I'm just gonna focus on what I think is the theme of this book, which is how can normal people like you and me, and especially young people, when they see injustice in the world and are deeply and emotionally affected by it, how can they do something about that injustice, even if it's in a small way, and some of those small things can have a really big impact. So Jordana grew up in a Jewish family in Toronto. However, Jordana slowly became more interested in her family history and where her family came from, and she learned from her grandparents some of what they faced during the Holocaust and during World War II. Her grandfather grew up in Eastern Europe, often fleeing the Nazis during the World War II period. Eventually, her family moved to Canada, where they live now. And for the most part, her family and her community thinks of Germany in a very negative way for very obvious reasons. Between 1941 and 1945, Nazi Germany and its collaborators systematically killed off over six million Jews. This was about two thirds of the European Jewish population. Now, if you think about Germany back in the 1930s, the economic situation was not good at all. There was a political motivation that said, if we do this, Germany will be strong again. And a lot of people believed it for one reason or another. Jordana really became aware of what happened during World War II when she went on the March of the Living, which is an organization that takes young people on a three kilometer walk, a memorial walk between the historic sites of Auschwitz and Birkenau and visits the concentration camps there while survivors from those concentration camps explain what happened while they were there. Jordana, as you can imagine, any of us would be, was very emotionally impacted by visiting these sites. And she thought that she should do something as a result of going on this March of the Living and find some way to speak out about what happened in the Holocaust to other young people who were back in Canada. 
Now, as she visited the concentration camps, Jordana made friends with a woman named Heidi. Heidi is a survivor of the camps of Auschwitz, and she is a regular tour guide. And when Jordana asked her, why do you come back here? Why do you come to this place that was so horrible to you and is such a bad memory for you? And Heidi responded to her, I do it so that this never happens again. Her role was to make sure people didn't forget and to remember what happened here in these concentration camps. For people like Jordana, for young people, to make them understand what was at stake when we talk about peace. Heidi and Jordana eventually became friends and they stayed in contact. During one of their routine phone calls, Jordana asked what was going on in Heidi's life. And Heidi mentioned that she and other survivors from Canada were supposed to attend a prominent Nazi's war crime trial. When Jordana started asking more questions, she learned that it was Oscar Groening, the bookkeeper of Auschwitz. Now, Jordana didn't know a lot about all the different figures who were prominent in Nazi history or in German history, and this name didn't particularly ring a bell. However, the longer that Heidi talked about this particular person, the more strongly she felt she needed to go to this war trial and witness justice in the making. Now, Groening was a Nazi since he was a young man, and his job was to work the ramp in Auschwitz and to gather all the belongings that the Jewish people brought in and then tally those belongings and most of those things went to the war efforts. So if there were anything of value then it would be deposited somewhere and there's museums today of all the different briefcases and all the lost valuables that were just left there and the reason they were left there is because people never came back from the concentration camps. And part of that is because of people like Oscar Groening who took all of the different belongings and all the evidence of what happened there and stored it away and did it quite nicely and quite efficiently and quite systematically and made the whole machine of the concentration camps work. So Oscar Groening was not someone who, as far as we know, killed anyone directly, but he was an important player in the machine of how they took Jewish people and made it so that they couldn't escape the concentration camps. After Heidi explained who Groening was, she said that the date was set for several weeks from now in Germany where Groening would be tried for justice. And the survivors were supposed to go there to give their testimony about what happened in Auschwitz and other concentration camps. And that was supposed to be the way that they were going to decide if he was innocent or guilty during what happened there. So Heidi and Jordana said their goodbyes after speaking and Jordana thought, what does even a war crime trial look like? So she went on YouTube, like most of us do, and she went and watched the trial of Adolf Eichmann, who is in charge of deporting and taking all of the Jewish prisoners to concentration camps. Now, an idea formed in Jordana's mind, which was, what if I went to go see this trial that is going to happen in three weeks? What if I went to witness what justice looks like in the making as a young person? So she called back Heidi and when she spoke with her, of course Heidi thought she was not serious. And just to be clear, I think it took major, major bravado on Jordana's part to say, I'm going to show up at a historic war trial that will have lots of rules and obligations and it's gonna be very hard to get into, but Jordana really believed in herself and what she could do, and in turn, a lot of the adults around her started believing in her too, because there's something that's very true in this world, which is if you take yourself very seriously and you're very passionate about something, the world and the people around you will try and find a way to help you if they can. And Jordana was lucky enough to be surrounded by supportive people who really want to see her succeed. And yes, she did manage to make it to Germany to witness the trial of Oscar Groening. Her family was a little nervous about her going to Germany as a Jewish person, as you can understand, and they thought perhaps while she was there, it wouldn't be safe. However, while Jordana visited Europe, she actually found that a lot of people were very sympathetic and understanding, and the grandchildren and children of many people who were Nazis and involved in sort of the war and World War II, they wanted to change the future and not forget what happened back then. So some German young people worked in museums because they thought it was important for their generation to know and remember the Holocaust. And there were even some people Jordana met who their grandfather directly was a Nazi, but they spoke out against Holocaust deniers. Now, I won't get into the specifics of the trial, which I think is the main meat of the book, and it's very interesting to read. But what I will say is that it was very exciting to see how Jordana was affected by this whole experience 
experience of seeing a real criminal trial take place and trying to understand how justice could be done to an event that happened so long ago but that was so serious that something needed to be said about what happened. Jordana perhaps expected Oscar Groening to be on the same level as Adolf Hitler or some of the other people who we consider sort of the villains of the Holocaust and of the World Wars. However, what Jordana discovered is that Oscar Groening is someone that she thought looked like someone's grandfather and indeed did not deny that the Holocaust happened and did explain part of what happened from his experience and what he saw happen in Auschwitz and he was very forthcoming with explaining what his role was in what he did and why he did it. If you ever look up any of the news articles or any of the comments on news articles on the trial of Oscar Groening, who was at the time a very old man, because by the time the trial came around, I think it was 2015 or so, a lot of people wonder, why are you trying this old man? He can't even really be here, hold up even during the trial. And so there's some really interesting legal and ethical arguments in this book told in a very simple way about, does it make sense to try and take this man to task? Does it make sense to try and get this man to explain if he is guilty or not of war crimes. Because this man admitted that he was guilty of certain things, at least partially. And so you sort of start to think, well, he's brave enough to say he was guilty in some ways, but maybe not in others. And that's a very complicated, nuanced argument. And I think, how guilty was this person? My response to all of this, there was some gray area. Instead of just saying this person's wrong and that person's right, I think the author did a really great job of saying that some people felt that there was a gray area on this trial and it was hard to discern without more evidence and more people taking the stand to determine what exactly and how much guilt did Oscar Groening have in the incidents in Auschwitz. Oscar Groening had many privileges and access to many things that I think a lot of people didn't have in World War II. And he had those privileges because he was a Nazi and he was at a certain level in the administration. There's a quote from the book when Jordana was speaking with one of the survivors from Auschwitz about Oscar Groening's guilt and like how guilty is he? And the quote reads, do you remember when he said in court that he volunteered for the SS because of their reputation and the elegance of their uniform? When I was listening to him, I thought to myself, when you had that uniform on, you thought you were 10 feet tall, but here today you don't have the guts to own up for what you did in that uniform. When I think about social justice and what justice really means, I think what it means is that you have to pick a side. There's not really such thing as neutrality. And when we talk about neutrality, sometimes what we're trying to say is that we don't want to have to fight oppressive situations. Because if you don't pick a side, if you try and remain neutral, then you're in a similar situation to Oscar Groening, where in his case, he said, I was neutral. I was also in my own way a victim of this oppressive regime but in reality he was part of that regime itself and if you don't side with the oppressed you are siding with the oppressor. Let me read you a quote that really helped me and it's by Archbishop Desmond Tutu. If you are neutral in situations of injustice you have chosen the side of the oppressor. If an elephant has its foot on the tail of a mouse and you say that you are neutral the mouse will not appreciate your neutrality. And to come back to this book, as a young person, Jordana did not have everything figured out. She did not know exactly where she stood on certain issues of justice, but she knew she wanted to be a witness to what was happening. And that's okay because young people sometimes have very good intuitions about things that matter to them, even if they can't really put those intuitions directly into words. And sometimes if you take that intuition and you realize there's some small thing you can do, you never know what that impact might be. And adults might learn from what you, as a young person, might do so that they can also recognize how they can be better in their own lives. Jordana was clear she didn't want to live a life in the sense of neutrality. She wanted to find some way to directly help to alleviate the suffering of others. And I think she came away very clearly from the trial that that was very important to her. Now, by the end of the book, we're not really sure where Jordana is going to end up. And I was very curious to see what she decided to do with her life. I did a little research and this book was written in 2017. And now in 2022, she runs a charitable organization called Shadow Light, which brings the stories of Holocaust survivors to other young people to inspire and to help them understand their responsibility in making the world a better place. One of her projects from her organization was just featured this month. It's a World War II cattle car, like the train cars that took people to Auschwitz, and it's an immersive experience, and it's at Western University for students to learn about 
what happened in the Holocaust. So if I learned anything in this book, it's that you should never stop believing in yourself because as wild as some ideas are, they can still come true. So I hope you believe in your dreams and I hope you remember how important it is to know where you came from and to know your history because we don't want to repeat the bad things that happened and we want to make sure that there's an opportunity for young people after us to experience a world where peace is possible. This was a really inspiring read and I feel super inspired by Jordana's story to try my own way to make the world a better place and I hope you do too. Well, that's all for me this week. Please like, share, and subscribe. Um, we'll be reading more books next week, just like every week. I'm slowly putting my list of books together of books that I will be sharing as my best books of 2022. I'm looking forward to that and I plan on doing that in a video sometime in December. Thanks very much. Uh, never forget, stay curious, stay reading.